Hello! In this video we will talk about a special trigonometric limit and this is the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches 0 equals 1. The function sine of x over x is not defined at 0 and its graph displays a wave-like pattern with oscillations that decrease in amplitude as the distance from the center increases. In other words, the farther we go from the center, the smaller the waves get. Now notice that when we graph the numerator, which is sine of x, and the denominator, which is x, then we see that as x approaches 0, the sine function behaves more and more like this line. In other words, around 0, these two functions become nearly indistinguishable. And that is why the ratio of the values of these two functions as x approaches 0 gets closer and closer to 1. Now, this limit is very important on proving the derivatives of trigonometric functions like the derivative of sine and the derivative of cosine. The function sine of x over x also has a ton of applications in science and engineering. For example, the function is used in studying optics, signal processing, it is used in electrical engineering, computer graphics, probability and statistics. And these are just a few examples. Now let's see how we can prove that the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches 0 equals 1. First, notice that we cannot use direct substitution because replacing x with 0 will cause both the numerator and the denominator to become 0. Instead, in this video, I will show you how to use geometry to prove this limit. And for this, we need the unit circle in quadrant 1. So here we have a quarter of the unit circle and the radius is 1. We will start by drawing an angle in standard position. Then let this angle be angle x and the point where the terminal side crosses the circle be point A. From this point, we will draw a perpendicular down to the x-axis. And now, if this point is point B and the origin is O, now we have a right triangle O, A, B. In this triangle, we will establish some dimensions that we will use later to prove that this limit equals 1. First, the hypotenuse of this triangle is 1 because this is the radius of the circle. Next, sine of angle theta equals the opposite side AB divided by the hypotenuse 1. And because AB divided by 1 is AB, we can write that sine of angle X equals AB. So in this figure, I will write that AB is the same as sine of X. Now, cosine of angle X is the adjacent side OB divided by hypotenuse 1. Then we will write that cosine of X equals OB. Then in this figure, we can write that OB is the same as cosine of X. Now, let this point be point C. Then OC equals 1 because this is the radius of the circle. Now, from this point, we will draw a perpendicular up that will intersect the terminal side. And if this point is point D, now we have another right triangle, D, O, C. In this triangle, we will define the tangent of angle X, and we will write that tangent of X equals the opposite side, C, D, divided by the adjacent side, O, C, which equals 1. So then, we can write that tangent of angle X equals CD. Then in this figure, I will add that CD is the same as tangent of angle X. Now, once we have these dimensions established, let's take a look at the following figures. The triangle AOB, the sector AOC, and the triangle DOC. If we compare their areas, then we can say that the area of the sector AOC is greater than the area of the triangle 
AOB, but is less than the area of the triangle DOC. So here we have it. The area of the sector is greater than the area of the triangle AOB, but is less than the area of the triangle DOC. Now, to find the area of each triangle, we will use the formula A equals 1 half times base times height. But to find the area of a sector, the formula is 1 half times the radius squared times the angle theta. In the triangle AOB, the base is cosine of x and the height is sine of x. And if we replace this in the formula, we will get 1 half times cosine of x times sine of x. Now, in this formula, we will replace r with 1 because the radius of this circle is 1 and theta with x. So then, we will have 1 half times 1 squared times x. And now, in the triangle DOC, the base is 1 and the height is tangent of x. So, we will write 1 half times 1 times tangent of x. And now we have a compound inequality. Now, if we multiply all three parts by 2, we will eliminate these fractions. So now, to the left, we will have cosine of x, sine of x, in the middle, just x, and to the right, we will replace tangent with sine of x over cosine of x. Now, we will make some changes to this inequality so that in the middle, we end up with the expression sine of x over x. And for this, first we will divide all three parts by sine of x. So, we will divide the left side by sine of x, then the middle by sine of x, and now to the right, we know that dividing by sine of x is the same as multiplying by 1 over sine of x. So we will multiply by 1 over sine of x. And now to the left, sine of x and sine of x will cancel, and so to the right. And what we have now is cosine of x is less than x over sine of x and is less than 1 over cosine of x. So now in the middle we have x over sine of x, but we need sine of x over x. And to get sine of x over x, we will take the reciprocal of each of these expressions and we will reverse the inequality symbols. So to the left we will have 1 over cosine of x, flip the inequality symbol, in the middle sine of x over x, flip the other inequality symbol, and to the right, cosine of x. Now, to better visualize what I just did, imagine that we have three numbers, 3, 4, and 5. And you agree that 4 is greater than 3, but is less than 5. Now, if we take the reciprocal of each of these numbers, we will get 1 over 3, 1 over 4, and 1 over 5. And now, out of these three fractions, 1 over 3 is the largest, and 1 over 5 is the smallest. And to show this, we need to reverse the inequality symbols. So what we have now is that 1 over 3 is greater than 1 over 4, and 1 over 4 is greater than 1 over 5. And now, if we want the smallest number to be to the left, and the largest to the right, we will need to flip this inequality symbols one more time. So we will write that 1 over 5 is less than 1 over 4, and then 1 over 4 is less than 1 over 3. Now I will complete this step in this inequality. And for this I will write cosine of x to the left. I will flip the inequality symbol. In the middle I will have sine of x over x. Flip the other inequality symbol, and to the right, 1 over cosine of x. And now, in the middle, we have sine of x over x, just like we needed. In the next step, we will take the limit 
of each of these expressions as x approaches 0. So to the left we will have the limit of cosine of x as x approaches 0. In the middle, the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches 0. And to the right, the limit of 1 over cosine of x as x approaches 0. Now, to find the limit of cosine of x as x approaches 0, we will use direct substitution. If we replace x with 0, then cosine of 0 equals 1. So, the left side becomes 1. To the right, we can also use direct substitution. Cosine of 0 is 1, and 1 divided by 1 is 1. So, the left side also becomes 1. And now we see that as x approaches 0, these two limits are equal, so now we can add the equal sign. Now, how can we prove that the limit in the middle is also 1? To prove this, let's take a look at the squeeze theorem. This theorem tells us that if we have three functions, f of x, g of x, and h of x, and if g of x is greater than or equal to h of x, but is less than or equal to f of x for all x near a, except possibly at a, then the limit of these two functions as x approaches a equals l, then the limit of g of x as x approaches a is also l. In other words, as x approaches a, if the limits of these two functions are the same, then the g function that is always between f and h has to squeeze between these two functions, then as x approaches a, the limit of g of x is also l. So then, according to this theorem, if the limits of these two functions equal 1, then the limit of this function is also 1. So we just showed that the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches 0 equals 1. Thank you for watching.